this holiest day in the Christian year, I feel it impossible and improper to give consideration to the alarming and very disturbing industrial crisis appearing on the waterfront, granting that it may have serious and very divisive national consequences in the future. Because despite its menace to our national uh, cohesion, if it were to go badly astray, it is of very small importance compared to the great issue of this important holy day, which involves the whole meaning of life and the future of our culture and our species. Now today we must remember that in this commemoration there are various customs which draw attention to the power, the omnipotence and the compassion of a great cosmic power believed to lie at the heart of our universe, whose justice, majesty and mercy are all quite beyond our understanding. So intellectually we have a problem of believing in design rather than chance. As Robert Browning wrote at the start of the second section of his poem Christmas Eve and Easter Day, how very hard it is to be a Christian. What really does this mean? Well, I suppose in essence what we are saying is that there is a standard of conduct which Jesus puts forward in saying a man cannot serve two masters else he will love one and hate the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. This very important warning must disturb us greatly because the service of mammon is a metaphorical and mythical word for the worship of money. And it means that if you, however much you may like your church service and feel a cosy, comfortable glow and a spiritual hep about it. If your heart is really on making yourself and your family richer, it is difficult to see how one cannot claim you are loving mammon. And on Jesus' own statement, therefore, you are hating God. This would be a most unpalatable point to put to many modern churchgoers in prosperous middle-class areas. But it is one we must bear in mind, because Jesus' whole ethic is about giving. Suffering, serving and giving. It is not about holding authority. It is not about acquiring wealth. It is about care and compassion for those in trouble a concern for every person and indeed for all creatures and the whole cosmos as our ecologists have seen in recent times. So being a Christian will have social and political aspects as well as the need to wrestle with some hard intellectual problems. Now we often feel our society has made great progress, and in technical senses this appears to be the case. But we have made perhaps less than we realise, and that great medieval thinker, the mystic Thomas of Kempen, who wrote at the end of the 14th century in his imitation of Christ, 
The world may change, but it does not progress. Was perhaps pointing to a very tangible truth. Today you go to your bank to negotiate some new arrangement. What the manager will decide once in five minutes has to be referred to head office in Sydney or Melbourne and you wait two, three, four, five days for a reply. That technology hardly makes progress for the user. It may for the supplier. Again, if you think that going to a shop with modern devices is better, the new computerized cash register that records every detail of what you buy, isn't it funny? It takes three times as long to give you your change as the old-fashioned one did. The progress there again is not for the ordinary person. It is probably only for the profits of the seller and those who supply the seller with new equipment. So progress is a somewhat illusory dream. We pollute the world more as we produce more devices of value. Water and the air become increasingly defined. Now in this situation you have a tendency for people to adopt careers which profit by this. Now, if you are a master of business administration, confident that your skills would enable the firm you advise to greatly improve its bottom line by sacking staff, getting new machinery, and making everything as much as possible electronic, Remember, you are thinking in terms only of mammon, not of what happens to the people who lose their work. Not concerned for the poor. Jesus says you always have the poor with you. But I don't think he really meant that you should also be manufacturing them. And you may find yourself unwittingly worshipping mammon and hating God. Again, if you are an able Bachelor of Arts in Communication who believes that by good advertising which will persuade people or good political propaganda to persuade people that things not really good for them but good for your business employer or the government are somehow beneficial to the reader when they are not. There again, are you perhaps at risk of losing your soul to mammon? So there are very serious issues we need to worry about what Christianity means and how important its ideals are for the preservation of the ecosystem and the whole life all species on this planet. Great though our national crises may be, this cosmic crisis every individual faces and every man and nation, that is one which deserves our very careful meditation at this Easter tide.